Dear sisters and brothers in Christ Jesus, I am very happy to reflect with you on the liturgy of the Word presented to us on the 18th Sunday in Ordinary Times. As we begin, I invite you to spend a moment in prayer asking the Spirit of the Lord to walk with us through this journey of understanding the Word and to live our lives according to it. Today, we are living through the most heartbreaking phase of humanity as per our lived memories go. On the one hand, millions have lost their jobs. Many go under-treated for their common illnesses and also for COVID-19. In addition, we see the shortage of food materials. On the other, members of the same family are not able to meet and relate to as they would do in the past. Blood ties, friends, colleagues, are isolated on account of social distancing and quarantine. Loneliness intensifies on many aspects of human relationship. In fact, we earn for normalcy. When will normalcy return to my city? Will it happen at all? When will I get to meet my parents, children, spouses? Today's first reading from Prophet Isaiah represents what the most part of the world is undergoing. But he, however, offers us hopes that will never disappoint us. The Prophet says, Everyone who thirsts, come to waters, and he who has no money, come, come buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Come to me, hear that your soul may live, and I will make with you an everlasting covenant. Here, come signifies listening to God. More than ever in our realities today, we are invited to listen to God and to have unwavering trust in his protection and providence. How do we listen to? In our good conscience, we listen with our hearts, taking away focus from unrealistic truths to the one who is truth himself, Jesus our Master. Our listening should be strongly founded on the Word of God and in its message. Our actions and response to life situations should represent and manifest God's compassionate love for our brothers and sisters. Thus, it's no longer we who act, but God acts and accomplishes marvelous things for others and for ourselves as well. Friends, for sure, in one way or other, you are affected with current crisis in the world and how will it impact your Christian vocation? In the second reading, St. Paul the Apostle consoles us stating that nothing will separate us from the love of Christ. He says, For I am sure that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor things present nor things to come nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. At every difficult moment of our life, we should always turn to Christ Jesus, who is our cornerstone upon whom our Christian vocation is rooted and growing. In the Gospel, Jesus tells his disciples, and today, also to each one of us. They need not go away. You give them to eat. 
Jesus is asking you to give something to others. Will you give? There are thousands of stories told during this pandemic about giving something to others. And one among them is the sharing of Laurie Holbrook, a registered nurse which appeared in the Time magazine April 20, 2020. She narrates thus, A few weeks ago, I found out someone who I work closely with tested positive for COVID-19. I am preparing to quarantine myself again, which is not easy because I have a three-year-old and an 18-month-old. I can hear my kids' little footsteps. I can recognize which child it is by the sounds of their feet. But it's also hard because I can hear them cry and I want to hold them. I can hear them testing my lock on the door, but it just breaks my heart. This is how Lowry shared something of her own, a service to the COVID positive patients at the very cost of her family. To many of us as Christians, as Christian employers, we are truly challenged in the management of our employees and resources in taking care of those who depend on us for the livelihood. As followers of Christ, I consider it is our responsibility to give them something, to stand by them and assure them a decent human living, which is an integral part of Christian mission. What should we give? At the outset, we give them hope, which is born as a result of our faith in Christ Jesus. We strengthen those who have lost their hope, reach out with listening ears to those who are troubled, and to spend some valuable time with those who experience loneliness. Jesus fed about 5,000 men besides women and children. They all ate and were satisfied because they had spent all day with Jesus and were hungry. Our world today is in need of a compassionate approach to each individual because of the extraordinary health crisis. As we see Jesus in the Gospel, he had compassion on people and healed the sick. Let everyone who interacts with us see Jesus in us. And we have the responsibility to give something. Listening to God will make us victorious in all our trials. Further, enable us to give something to the needy. Now, let us pray with St. Jerome. Holy Spirit, be my teacher and guide. Open my ears to hear God's word and open my eyes to understand God's word and open my eyes to see, understand God's action in my life. May my heart never grow dull and may my ears never tire of listening to the voice of Christ Jesus. Amen. For further updates, subscribe to our channel and please click on the bell icon. Thanks for watching.